In this video, we're going to talk about the Farm Designer. The Farm Designer is the most fun part of configuring your FarmBot. This is where you graphically design your garden layout, and then FarmBot can use the locations of all your plants to grow your garden. The menu on the right side of the screen allows you to zoom in and out of the map, and also turn on and off the various map layers. The map is rendered according to the reachable area your FarmBot can travel to, as configured in the setup wizard, with grid lines every 10 millimeters, 100 millimeters, and 1000 millimeters. The map also shows a virtual FarmBot rendering, as well as the location of any tool bays and tools. Let's go ahead and add some plants to the virtual garden. To do so, navigate to the plants panel and press the plus button. Search for the crop you wish to add either by its common name or scientific name. Clicking on a result, you'll see a basic description of the crop along with a photo and an icon if available. At the bottom of the panel is where you can choose the water spread and height curves you would like to use with the new plantings. The app will automatically suggest the most used curves for that crop if there are any, so you can quickly reuse the same settings if desired. To add plants to the map with the chosen settings, drag and drop from the image into the map and let go wherever you want the plant to land. You can also simply click in the map to add a plant. Alternatively, you can use the grid and row planting form to add many plants in a perfectly spaced grid or row. Let's go ahead and plant a few carrots here and then exit out of the panel with the escape key. You'll now see these plants listed in the plants panel. If you need to edit the location of any of these plants, you can click on one in either the plants panel or in the map and then either drag it around the map or manually enter in new coordinates. Note that the plant locations are always rounded to the nearest 10 millimeters. In the plant details panel, you can view and edit other properties as well, such as the start date. While new plants have a default start time of today, you can change to a future date if you plan on putting the seeds in the ground during the coming weekend, or a past date if you are starting with transplanted seedlings of a certain age, allowing any regimens and curves to apply correctly. When a plant is selected, there will be a green circle shown around it in the map. This circle represents the maximum spread of the crop, which is the maximum size that the crop is expected to grow according to the spread curve or fallback data, and this can be useful in helping plan your garden. Hovering over the assigned spread curve will render the expected spread at different ages of the plant, providing further visualization of how the garden will grow over time. You can also turn on the spread map layer to visualize the spread of all plants in the garden and rearrange as needed to prevent overlap and crowding. When a plant overlaps with another plant, this will be indicated by yellow, orange, and red spread circles when dragging and dropping the plant around. Once you have a garden full of different plants, you'll want to organize them into plant groups so that you can later run sequences over all plant members in that group. To create a group, click the plus group button in the plant group section of the panel. This will open the edit group panel with your new untitled group loaded and all of the plants selected. You can then apply filters to narrow down the members of the group. For plant groups, you can filter by stage, type, age, and location. You may mix and match as many filter options as needed to create dynamic groups for various purposes. FarmBot will always use the filters to calculate the current group members as your garden changes over time. For instance, if you add more plants to your garden that match the group's filters, they will automatically be included in the group. You may also manually select members to add to the group by simply clicking the plants in the Farm Designer map, which may be easier than using filters, particularly when creating small groups. In addition to selecting group members, you can also choose the sorting order that FarmBot will use when moving to each group member during a sequence. A dashed line on the map visualizes the chosen path, along with numbers next to each member indicating its order within the group. Next up is the Gardens feature, allowing you to save the layout of your garden for reuse in a future season. To save a garden, click the plus garden button within the plants panel. Here you'll be prompted to enter a name and optional notes about your garden. Once you've filled in these details, click on Snapshot Current Garden. Your garden layout will then be saved and appear in the list of gardens. To view and edit a saved garden, select it from the garden section of the plants panel. You can then add new plants, reposition existing ones, and delete plants from the saved garden. To help differentiate between your current and saved gardens, the map background will turn gray when a saved garden is being displayed. Once you're done viewing and making changes, click the exit button in the saved gardens panel or in the viewing saved garden menu at the top of the map area. When you're ready to reuse one of your saved gardens, you'll need to apply it to an empty map. First, clear the current garden with the Delete All Active Plants button located at the top of the garden section. 
With the current map now empty, select your desired garden from the list and click apply. Next up is the weeds panel where you can manage all of the weeds in your garden. Weeds are divided into three categories, pending, active, and removed. Pending weeds are the ones detected by the FarmBot's camera and are waiting for your manual triage. You can either move these weeds to the active category or delete them altogether. Active weeds are those currently causing trouble in your garden. And finally, removed weeds are the ones that no longer pose a concern because they were eliminated by FarmBot or by hand. It is recommended to create at least one group of weeds for all of the active weeds in the garden. That way you can run a weed removal sequence over this ever-changing list on a weekly or daily basis. To do so, click the plus weed group button and select the active filter. Then give the group a name and return to the weeds panel to save. Next up is the points panel. If you need to create custom locations in your garden for FarmBot to move to that aren't plants, tool slots, or the home location, you can use points. For example, you could create points for FarmBot to move to when you're harvesting and need it out of the way. Points in each corner of the bed to serve as alternative home positions, or points for FarmBot to travel to for daily photos. To add a point, click the plus point button in the points panel. This will open the add point panel where you can add individual points or create a grid of points. Click and drag in the map to define the coordinates and radius, or enter in values manually. If FarmBot is already positioned at a location of interest, you can click the Use FarmBot's Current Position button to load those coordinates. To manually add a soil height point, check the At Soil Level checkbox. Soil height points are automatically added to an expandable section in the points panel where they are sorted by height. Toggling soil height on will show the soil height values in the map. And as with plant and weed groups, you may also create groups of points using the plus point group button. Once you've populated your map with tools, plants, points, photos, and more, it can become a little overwhelming to look at. To toggle various map layers and to zoom in and out, open up the map menu in the top right corner. Here you can control the visibility of various objects, as well as apply specific filters such as a date range for your photos. Toggling the Z setting will show and hide an indicator of FarmBot's position along the Z axis. The Profile Viewer allows you to visualize a cross-sectional view of any location in your garden. To open the Profile Viewer, press the icon at the bottom of the map area. By default, the viewer will show a cross-section 500 millimeters wide and aligned with the gantry's current position, as denoted by the shaded region in the map. Within the Profile Viewer, you will see all of the items located within the cross-section, which will include the soil and possibly FarmBot's gantry, Z-axis, toolhead, tools, and any plants, weeds, or points. Additionally, the safe height will be shown as a horizontal blue line, and the max distance the Z-axis can move to will be shown as a dashed gray line. And that concludes the overview of the Farm Designer in the FarmBot web app. To follow along as we make updates to the app every few weeks, make sure to subscribe to our email newsletter at newsletter.farm.bot. All right, see you in the next video.